Hello fellow problem solvers, so there I'll be doing a geometry problem from my second team selection test for the Junior Balkan Math Olympiad, which I passed. Problem number three. So, I invite you to try this geometry problem out, especially if you're new to geometry and want to prepare. This is a nice problem to try out for a minimum of half an hour, ideally 90 minutes to 120 minutes. Not more than three hours on the other hand. But if you'd like to go along with us, give it a go. Draw the diagram for the next 15 minutes. And you would think there's even knowledge to be found in how you draw a diagram. So let's begin with this problem. I hear was bad at geometry. It took me a while also to like figure this problem out at the time. So how would we draw this? Well, we're going to have the in circle of the triangle ABC and these tangency points. So let's draw the in circle first. Why do I do this? It's easier to draw a circle and then a point here, like call this point A, and then two tangents, then it is to go ahead and first draw the triangle and then the in circle. It's just a matter of what is easier for you to draw. And I'm going to have BC be somewhere here. I'm going to have a tangency point like that, boom, tangency point like that. And now we have ABC, lines M and Okay, so, and now we have the angle bisector here. Now, there, is, there are a lot of ways we can go about this problem. One way is to first see, okay, at every single moment, what is it that I have, right? What is it that I have? Here, I have that this is alpha, because this is equal to this. I have this is beta half plus gamma half, and this is beta and gamma, and this is beta half plus gamma half. And then I have the intersection of this angle bisector of ABC. So this is beta half and beta half. And this is a point B. And we must prove that this angle is 90. Which seems like, how are we going to prove this angle is 90? It seems very, very difficult. But first, the first thing we do is we say, Let's calculate the angle. So what do we have? We have this angle here is going to be gamma half. Okay, that's something. And now what is it? We, we need this angle to be 90. So we need this one to be alpha half plus gamma half. So we need this one to be, what is this going to be? Gamma half minus alpha half. And then this angle needs to be if this is gamma half, then this one must be alpha half plus beta half to get to this. And one way of going about this problem is saying, okay, would anything special hold true if we had that? If we had this was alpha half plus gamma half, and this was gamma half minus alpha half, and this was beta half plus alpha half. Will we have anything special? And in this diagram, the answer is no. There would be nothing special if this was 90. Nothing special that we can connect, no four points that are concyclic or points which lie on a circle, or concyclic, or we wouldn't have any collinearity or any parallel lines. There's nothing really that we have right now. Which brings me to a point where I invite you to pause for the next 15 minutes and ask yourself, what would you do in this situation? And now the answer is, well, let's look at this. So one thing is, there are many ways to think about this problem and geometry in general. One way is to say, oh, what am I really using for M and N? And the answer is, I'm really only using one fact here. I'm using the fact that AM is equal to AN. I'm not using the fact that they're on this circle. Because if you just draw parallel lines here, you'll get AM is AN, and you will have all these angles. But I'm not using the fact that it's that these are the tangency points on the in circle. Right? Even this intersection P, meaning P isn't even using that. And we need to use that somehow. We're not doing it right now. That rhymes. And now the question is, okay, how can we use that? Right? We need to use that somehow. And that's one way of thinking. Now, if you didn't notice this before, 
I invite you to pause for another 15 minutes and ask yourself, how am I going to use the fact that these are in the in circle, right? Pause and ask yourself that. If you have, I hope you paused if, and asked yourself that, though another way we could also ask is, how would I construct points M and N? Right, what would I need to construct them? You know, how would I draw them? And, but more importantly than them, actually, how would I draw this angle bisector? That's also another point. And for me, and the, there's, that's also another question you can ask yourself and pause again for five, 10 minutes, see if that question like gets any of the creative juices flowing. So the answer is here, let's, uh, let's just delete this, what we have, what we need. And the answer is, well, I would draw the angle bisector by putting in the center of the in circle, I. That's what the angle bisector is there. And I can use the fact that M and N are on the in circle by drawing these perpendiculars right here. Now, there's a unique point I such that now I N is equal to I M and because these two are equal, because I M is equal to I N, that means, and this is important, that I is on the angle bisector of B A C. Like if you, just any point I here, such that I, the perpendicular is from I to the sides A, B and A, C. If they're equal, that means the point is on the angle bisector of B A C. Right? So just adding an I, that's just like I in general, like, that the idea here is that when we add an i, it defines m and n uniquely if we use this fact now. And now let's try to calculate some of these angles that we have. So this was beta half plus gamma half, which means this angle is alpha half. This angle is also alpha half. And now we have these 90 degree angles. And we also have, we can connect I and C, we have this again, how we don't need to do that, but anyways. So now the question is, okay, I added in the I. Now, if I'm using I M is I, I N is I M, then I am also taking into account that I is the in center. And I'm using the fact that these two are on the in circle and they're there at the tangency points. So now I'm using that. Now the difficult part is, okay, how am I going to connect this P and C, right? I need BPC or IPC to be 90. What does that mean? Do I have that? I invite you to pause for another 10 to 15 minutes and see if you have that or if there's anything else you would add and do. And the answer is, well, if BPC was 90, what would I have? Going to add the problem backwards. You know, if the problem condition is true, what is also true? And is this thing that's also true something I can, I maybe already have? So if IPC was 90, then I, and we had I and C 90 as well, right? Because there's a perpendicular, we'd have IP and C are concyclic. So now maybe that's going out of backwards. Now forwards is, do I have that I, P, and C is concyclic? Pause here for the next you know, 15 minutes and try to prove that. And the answer is, I do. Because this angle right here, we calculated before, B, P, M is gamma half. And the angle I, C, N is also gamma half. Because this is the angle bisector. Right? I see the angle bisector of ACB. Now given this one's gamma half, and so given IPN is equal to 180 minus the angle IPM, which is equal to 180 minus the angle ICN, this implies that I, P, and C are concyclic.
right? That these four points lie in the same circle. And now, given that these points are concyclic, what do we have? I invite you to pause for five minutes to figure it out. What do we have? Well, we have that the angle IPC is equal to the angle INC, which we know is equal to 90 because N is the tangency point of the circumcircle and the side AC. And the angle IPC is equal to the angle BPC. So the angle BPC is equal to 90 degrees. And this finishes up the problem. Now, what I did here was I also added this point of tangency. And I also just calculated some angles and found the, this concyclic condition, this concyclic um, facts. And it's interesting now, right, I'm making this video as I'm solving the problem, that just by going at this step by step in a principled way, what do I have asking these questions, trying to motivate it that I saw, I don't even need this point to prove the fact, which I think is cool. And I think it's cool that if you follow these principles, you ask yourself like, what am I using for these points? Am I fully using the capacity of these points? How can I fully use the fact that these points are on the inner circle, right? You could also use that fact fully by saying that this is equal, this is equal to, uh, what, what is it, uh, B plus C minus A, right? Yeah, it's B plus C minus A. That would also be using the points fully, but it wouldn't get you anywhere closer to proving that this is 90. At least I don't think it would. Trigonometry, I'm thinking, but no. No, it's just, it's unnecessarily difficult if you're trying to go down that route. And maybe another motivation, why use them by adding in the in-center instead of what this actually is, is because we're dealing with angles here and the in-center gives us angles. We're not dealing with side lengths very much, we're dealing with angles, so that's another reason why to do that. This finishes up our problem, and as always, thanks for problem solving.